Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Usman Tanveer. Um, I'm a part-time writer, and I'll be moderating your session with uh, Musharraf Ali Farooqi, who's your star guest. Uh, Musharraf is a writer of different kinds of stories and books, and I'm going to let him introduce himself as he deems fit. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we, I've requested them to leave the doors open. Uh, so that those of you who get bored from the bored with the conversation, they can just charge out. Uh, okay, no, they're closing it, so you can't. Uh, all right. So uh, thank you again uh, for um, coming to this uh, conversation. It's a conversation about the book, The Merman and the Book of Power, Apissa. And it is uh, an illustrated talk in which I try to explain how this, uh, what, what constitutes this book or how certain of the themes uh, in this, uh, which are explored in this book uh, were imagined. Uh, so um, I'll let uh, All right, so we're gonna, thus we're gonna start um, our conversation. So I would like to start the conversation with a um, particular ideology, and we've talked about this before. In March 1989, Annie Dillard wrote an essay in the New York Times. The essay was called Write Till You Drop. In that essay, Annie asked a simple question of her readers and her writers. And she said, why do you never find anything written about that idiosyncratic thought you add word to about your fascination with something no one else understands? Because it is up to you. There's something you find interesting for a reason hard to explain. It is hard to explain because you've never read that on a page. That is where you begin. You, in brackets, a young writer, was sent here to give voice to your own astonishment. When I was reading uh, The Merman and the Book of Power, I kept thinking of this because it's a highly unusual book and it's a massive accomplishment. And I think by writing this book, Musharraf has given voice to his own astonishment things that he has gravitated towards. Musharraf, would you agree? Um, yes. I'll also add that uh, this book is, is, uh, is an exploratory journey in the genre of the Qissa, which I had not uh, uh, experimented with before. Well, there was another small Qissa which I had written before. It's called the Jindra's Ghosh, um, and more on that uh, in the coming days. But uh, this was uh, a new genre for me. Um, I've written a couple of novels, but I had not written a qissa, but I'm fascinated by qissas and dastans and their structure and their ability to explore and experiment with uh, narratives, ideas, and, uh, and characters without the use of uh, dialogue, without the use of uh, too much, uh, without any interior life, so to say, and their ability to keep uh, people engaged uh, for uh, thousands of years. So I thought, why not try writing this in English and see how I'm able to pull it off. So we'll, we'll see. So um, since I finished the book, I will say you did pull it off. <laughs> um, wise words, wise words. Good man. <laughs> Um, it, so, from, for the young writers or aspiring or newish or established writers in the room, we all know that there is something uh, like technical proficiency. It's technically also a very accomplished book. Um, Musharraf and I talked about this briefly before. Not using dialogue in a book-length book is tough. That is not easy. It is difficult to retain a reader's interest. And um, uh, the historical narratives, the decolonized, pre-colonized narratives used to excel in this. Oral storytelling, and Kisas, I believe, came from the Ori storytelling tradition, oral storytelling tradition in the beginning? Yes. Uh, so if we, if we try to, um, I recently, um, um, I train, uh, I have a program called Story Kit, uh, which runs in schools, which is, uh, which uh, we organize uh, sponsored storytelling sessions across Pakistan. And um, in the process, I've, uh, uh, developed a method of training storytellers. So I was trying to train somebody as one of the uh, group of storytellers in uh, narrating a story which was heavy on dialogue uh, just as, as a narrative without dialogue. So how do you do that? 
for example, I mean, you can look at any novel and you can just give a summary of that novel. That would be one way of narrating it. But how do you narrate every single um, scene if you were to narrate it in that, in that way? So it was um, very interesting, um, also tough to come to terms with it, and you have to adjust. So for example, if a character is saying something in scene four, th uh, that has to come right at the beginning for his thought process to become known to the readers, uh, to the listeners, to the audience, before, uh, before the reader actually, because the reader is not able to re read the dialogues because there are no dialogues. So a person could say, well, I know you did something that day and you used one of my, uh, you stole my wallet. But it has to be described in the beginning. I'm not, I, I know I'm not doing a very good job of explaining it, but the idea is that an act that happens somewhere which can be explained with the use of dialogue um, much later in the narrative has to be brought right up. In, in, when, you, when you're trying to narrate it in the form of a kissa or a dastan or a plain narrative without dialogue. So, so you're kind of using the um, initiating dialogue. It's almost inductive to the structure then. Is that, uh, am, am I getting you correctly? Yes, because uh, you know, uh, the whole modern uh, structure of uh, writing novels and short stories is built on show, don't tell. And we have the very opposite of that, tell. <laughs> and, show. you know, don't show, just, just tell the whole thing. And this is how I wrote uh, one of my novels between Clay and Dustin, which is very little dialogue except in places where something had to be spoken by a character to... Uh, but this is, this is a completely reversed form of... Uh, so you you sort of, uh, you know, taken the talk to one of my favorite areas, the technicalities of fiction and writing fiction. So we talk about interiority and exteriority. Exteriority being the environment, the character's actions, interiority, the psychological director of fantasy fiction. Hmm. Um, she's a friend, she lives in uh, Sharjah. And uh, she said, um, I cannot read it because it reminds me so much of all the stories, kissas that I grew up with. And I want to break away from that. You know, I want to write dialogue. I said, fine, you know, that's fine. Uh, so uh, there are ways of, uh, see, um, when you imagine a character, you begin imagining a character, you begin imagining the, uh, the surroundings, you begin imagining the interior life. You do, you do all of that before you write it down. You know, you have a story and it's a story is always built on motivations and uh, how, we, how we would act in a given situation. So, um, in, the, in the case of uh, the Merman, um, I had to imagine all the characters, their lives, how they, would, how they would behave, how they would act, and then chose no dialogue, you know, just put them in a situation where the situation uh, is either told from their point of view or it is a situation in which they are seen by a third, uh, you know, uh, an omniscient narrator doing something. So, um so then the point of views, and I'm sure the writing students in the room or people who do write, they're familiar with the idea of points of view. So you can have first point of view, first person point of view, second person point of view, third omniscient, um, different points of view. So did you choose this particular point of view because you are fluctuating, you're staying mostly in Kazwini's head. Yes. Who is the compiler of the best theory. But you are sometimes moving away and you're sort of zooming out and creating a miniature of the scenes. And as we all know, miniature art is, has been um, a big legacy of the Indo-Islamic um, cultures. Is, is, did it feel like that, that you were creating miniature art? Uh, one of the, um, I, I, I like short narratives. Um, I've gravitated towards, my agent tells me that your first uh, novel that, uh, that was published many years ago was about <laughs> Uh, 70 or 80,000 words, then it became 60, then it became 50, then it became 40, and this is also 40. So this is the second novel which I've written, which is 40,000 words. And a ch children's novel is about 30,000 words. So yes, I'm shrinking the narrative, um, but it's also a matter of the nature of the narrative. Now, I'm, I'm, 
looking at narratives as of two different kinds. There are books in which something momentous happens, which can only be explored in a novelistic form, because novel is a very, very strong genre to deal with all kinds of complex uh, human emotions and uh, situations. So there is the novel, which is very strong, which is an excellent uh, platform for exploring certain uh, situations, certain stories. Uh, and I have not given up on that. But there are other stories which are fun stories or which just move from, you know, which go rolling nicely and there is a happy end or a sad end. And for those stories, I think, um, which do not have a lot of interior life or where a lot of interior life depiction is not needed, uh, I want to write them as film scripts. So something like 20,000 words in which the complete story is given, the book comes out, I call it a qissa or a story or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I want to work on those stories which require a lot of, uh, in the form of the novel, um, something momentous. So uh, as, as you grow and as you see the end of your life uh, ahead of you, you want to devote yourself to certain kind of narratives which, um, which are important to you as a person, as a, as a writer, uh, and that's the idea you know, of And if I'm not mistaken, you spent five years writing this 40,000 word manuscript, is that correct? Yes, not all five years, but there were times when I was, uh, but yes, it took me five years to. So um, something that people don't know um, that I, I will you know, talk about a little bit is the novella form. So when you're hitting the 40,000 word territory, you're almost in the novella territory. Mm -hmm. So Western publishing divides story form into different, by word length, it's a marketing uh, mechanism. Mm -hmm. So 7,500 words is a short story, 14,000 word is a novelette, uh, up to 40,000 word is a novella. So it's almost, and uh, The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway, is, by the way, is a novella, it's 28,000 words. So you're about 40,000 words in the novella form, and it sounds like you feel that might be your passion, or that might be the form that's most suited to the storytelling that you want to do? Yes, uh, even, in the in the, even in the form of the novel, I think uh, there are stories where important things happen, and if you're able to construct the narrative in a way that those important scenes, situations, thoughts get portrayed in a well-joined narrative, uh, then it can work. Uh, you don't have to write a 200,000 uh, word novel, although I love The Count of Monte Cristo, I love all of <laughs> Alexander Duma novels, which are all about 1,800 uh, pages. So I love very fat books, and I love very thin books. And a lot of those writers were very villa. <laughs> So, so there's a lot so, more time than people in the world. Another point of you know, commonality. <laughs> so um, with, with your permission, Usman, I'd like to just briefly uh, go over this. Uh, um, how do we uh, do that? Uh, you're just going to roll it, right? When I, so this is just the title. Here is Usman. <laughs> my book. Uh, go to the next. I think we're about to get a pointer. There we go. So, Mr. while they're setting that up, maybe I can ask you one more question. Yes, yes, uh, because we have so many people in the room who might be interested in that notorious, awful question writers get. Where do you get your ideas? Where do I get my ideas? Um, Where, where do I not get my ideas <laughs> from? Uh, it's, uh, it's difficult, uh, you know, when you are starting off as a very young writer, which I was many years ago, um, you are desperate for ideas. Because, yes, you have read many stories, but you have only a couple of ideas. Uh, and you want to hold on to them. And everything that you write is perfection itself etc, etc. 
Um, I have lived that life for a period of time. Um, and after that, you suddenly begin to have, you, you write your first novel or your first story, and that's a struggle. But after that struggle is over, you have, you have experimented with that form and gone through the process of whether it's a novel or a short story or a poem, whatever. Uh, you know how to structure things at some level. And then you, then you begin to have more ideas. You read more, you get more ideas. And uh, uh, slowly, um, there are a lot of ideas. And you, have, you start chasing after, OK, this is also good, this is also good. But when you, when you um, come to a stage where you have struggled with narratives for a long time, like between clay and dust, it took me 10 years to write. And it was not that I was writing, for it, uh, writing it for 10 years. It was just that I was conscious of that story. It was at the back of my mind all those 10 years. And I was taking hints, tips, whatever I observed, that whether I can use it in the novel or not, depending on the situation, of course, not all the time. So um, then you begin to, then you become, become more selective. Between Kill and Dust was not an easy novel for me. I struggled very hard. Um, and I could imagine the narrative, but it was not, I was incapable of executing it. So there was a time when I was finally able to decide and make a choice that, okay, no, this is, the, this is how it's going to be told, this is the way it's going to be written, and then I attempted it. But there was a time before that when there was, you know, complete unsurety, okay, it's not working, whatever, you know. So um, after a while, you, you become more choosy, you want to struggle with chosen narratives, not everything, because, you know, there are lots of ideas, lots of stories. Our uh, country like Pakistan is full of interesting things happening. And plus, you want to leave a legacy behind. Speaking of which, we're going to start with the books within the book. Right. So um, the first book that we come upon in this, uh, in this Qissa is uh, Ajayab al-Makhluqat wa Gharayab al-Mawjudat, which translates to marvels of things created and miraculous aspects of things existing. It's a wonderful title. I wish I could have it for my book. But this was by Pasvini, who was a 13th century, um, you can say he was a great uh, scientist, jurist, uh, scholar, uh, cosmographer. And he, uh, he, wrote, uh, he wrote this book uh, at a time when the Abbasid Caliphate had, uh, was ending and the new uh, power, the Mongols, or the Ilkhanid dynasty, as they're called, uh, they were taking over. So the book opens at a time when the Abbasid Caliph has been killed, and the Mongols have taken over. Now, when Mongols were attacking Baghdad in its last day, everyone heard that, oh, brother, how did Baghdad get to the war? It was a big deal, it was a big deal, it was a big deal. There is another aspect of the story, and that is when the Mongols, came, when the Mongols took over Halaku Khan's uh, forces, they installed Juveni uh, as the governor. Now, Juveni is one of the most well-known historians of the Islamic world. So if we understand that the Mongols or Halaku Khan were you know, just uh, uh, hordes of you know, wild people, who were destroying everything in their wake. That's not right. They were empire builders. And they were very, very conscious of their place in society, their place in history. And they were uh, choosing the right kind of people to work with. So they had chosen Juveni before that. Before uh, taking over Baghdad, Juveni had Kalaul uh, uh, Moth, uh, Johashishin ka castle tha. Uh, Juveni was there as well, negotiating with the Hashishin or unke, uh, unke, uh, jo nazim tha. Or Mongols had a very clear idea of what kind of art and literature they want to patronize. They said all religious books will be burnt or destroyed, and all books of sciences, um, of sciences of any kind, language, uh, astrology, astronomy, uh, physics, whatever you know, to, in whatever kind it existed, will be preserved. So when they took over Baghdad, 
one of their jobs was to select the books from Baghdad's big library. And this is where Azvini and Giovanni, uh, their lives intersect, and uh, we go forward from that. The second book is, uh, is an occult book. It's the Book of Treasures of Alexander the Bicornus, or Kitabe Zakhira Sikandar Zulkarnan. This is the name of the book. Uh, it's a book of magic. You can say um, it is. Many people want it. It is still available in the market, actually, <laughs> in PDF format <laughs> for anybody interested. But this book um, has many spells, many um, supposedly um, occult practices, which if you perform or if you carry out, you'll acquire certain kind of powers. So these are the two books which, uh, which go move back and forth within this Qissa. So just to clarify, allegedly you will acquire those powers. Uh, <laughs> I won't say that yet. Kazvini's research. So this merman is brought to the court of Juveni, who is a historian, but he's also the governor of Baghdad, and he's tasked with um, the reconstruction of Baghdad after the Mongol destruction. So he's trying to, you know, uh, Pay attention to it. Like in Marmans, you have to take some machinery and say that you are some kind of special person that you have brought so many strange and weird creatures. So he wants to get rid of it. 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 He wants to He's building a cosmography in which all the creatures and all the species uh, which God has created, he's trying to classify them in an order. But merman is a creature which he cannot immediately classify. It's not complete animal, it's not uh, complete human being, so where does he cluck? Uh, where do you fit him in the scheme of things? So this is the Sorry for the typo there, the Sheikh of Sweet Speech. Just like you think he's a shakal, that's what he did. When um, sailors were going to their homes, they 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 were going to their homes, and then they were going to take over their homes, they were going to their homes. So this, uh, uh, this thing in the small corner is the original illustration uh, on which this character is modeled. This is by, the illustrations are by Michel Farouki, who's uh, here, I think, standing somewhere. But this is uh, Shape of Sweet Speech. Or yes, the original is Now there's, I'd like to briefly speak about the illustrations. Some of these illustrations follow, uh, they mimic exactly, or to, to a great extent, the originals like this one. Uh, there are some in which we have made some amendments uh, because the nature of the story was uh, dedicated, uh, demanded that. And then there are some which are completely original. So, but this is also the pattern in the stories. There are some uh, passages from Qazwini which I have lifted directly from his book, Ajayab al-Makhluqat wa Gharayab al-Majudat, and there are some which I have amended, and there are some which are completely fictitious. This is the man of the sea. So you see slight change, sorry if no clothes, but you know, that's who he was. Um, and he was smelly, so you can see all these flies hanging from his tail. Uh, so these are the different creatures Qazwini is investigating. That, okay, in this case, these are some people and animals who were able to keep the animals and animals. But what can be classified in this way? This is Sheikh Yehudi. He knew the underwater burial place of Hermes's Emerald Tablet of Magic. There are a lot of magic uh, books, references. And uh, this is the original again in the, on, on the left hand side. And here we have uh, him in the form he appears in the book. Or uh, now this is uh, an example of how we have amended 
an illustration. So this is uh, horned demon tortoise. This is a sada sa kachwa tha. Usko humne horned demon tortoise bana diya. Kahani ke liye. Or isme baaki cheeze vesi hi hain, jaise uski original illustration mein thi. Lekin if you look at the face, it's a is the face of a demon with horns on it. Or inki apni kahani hai. So अब इन पे इनको देखकर कज़वीनी साहब जो हैं अपनी थ्योरी कुछ बना रहे हैं मर्मन के बारे में और ये भी सोच रहे हैं कि ये हो सकता है कि मर्मन अपनी तौर पर एक अजूबा हो जिस तरह के ये मखलूक है इसका नाम है कभी किज कभी किज इस्लाम में एक वर्ल्ड के अंदर अब हम इसको नाम से वाकिफ नहीं रह गए लेकिन अगर आप पुराने मैनुस्क्रिप्ट उठा के देखें तो उसके ऊपर लिखा होता था या कभी किज या कभी किज या कभी किज और कई मरतबा उसकी पूरी चेंज चल रही होती थी छः मरतबा नौ मरतबा एंड कभी केज इज़ द लॉर्ड ऑफ इंसेक्ट्स और जिस तरह हम कोई तावीज़ बना देते हैं कि उससे चीज़ महफूज रहे तो कीड़ों के लिए किताब को मैनस्क्रिप्ट को कीड़ों से महफूज रखने के लिए या कभी केज उसके ऊपर लिखा जाता था एंड कंसिडरिंग द सरप्राइजिंग नंबर ऑफ मैनस्क्रिप्ट दर सर्वाइव विद या कभी के विच नेम ऑन इट पर यू नो दिस वॉज इफेक्टिव अच्छा So uh, this is a completely original illustration. Uh, Kazmini does not even mention Yakabi Kej. So this is an example of where an illustration was completely imagined. So now Kazmini sahab chalte hain, kehte hain ki beast human ki ek category honi chahiye, jisme do tarah ke janwar ho. Ek wo jin ki kuch chize ek insan jaisi hain, baaki mukammal taur pe janwar jaisi hain. और एक ऐसी जिनकी मिक्स्ड हैं चीज़ें तो ये इन्होंने एक सिंपल बीस्ट ह्यूमन जिसके अंदर ये इस तरह के क्रीचर्स हैं उनका बनाया और फिर इन्होंने कॉम्प्लेक्स बीस्ट ह्यूमन का बनाया और कॉम्प्लेक्स बीस्ट ह्यूमन यूं के ऑल दो द मर्मेन हैड अ ह्यूमन अपर बॉडी हिज टीथ वर कैनाइन तो उसने कहा कि ये एक इंसानी जिसम के अंदर एक एक जानवर का uh, एक क्वालिटीज के अंदर है तो उसने उसको इस तरह से सेपरेट किया एंड देन द स्टोरी यू नो हिज ओन रिसर्च अबाउट डिफरेंट क्रीचर्स एंड एनिमल्स चलती है वहाँ से uh, और फिर पता चलता है कि बहुत सारे लोग जो हैं वो डर रहे हैं मर्मन से और उसको कह रहे हैं कि ये दज्जाल की कोई शक्ल है और उसकी एक वजह थी uh, उसकी वजह यह थी कि जब बगदाद पे हलाकू खान ने हमला किया था तो दिस इज़ रिकॉर्डेड हिस्ट्री कि लोगों ने कहा था कि ये दुनिया का खात्मा हो रहा है और ये याजूज माजूज की कौम है जो हम पर हमला कर रही है और उन्होंने कहा था कि बस सब लोग तैयार हो जाएं अपने मालिक को जान सौंपने के लिए और इन लोगों से कोई तारुज नहीं किया जाए इनको रजिस्ट नहीं किया जाए बस इफ़ दे वॉन्ट टू किल एस दैट्स द एंड तो दिस वॉज अ बिग अ बिग सेंटिमेंट एट दैट टाइम तो कजवीनी सोचता है कि अच्छा बीस रुपये को पॉप क्लिप्स क्या हैं जिस तरह दज्जाल है तो और भी थे सिर्फ दज्जाल ही नहीं होता है और भी होते हैं तो वो उनके बारे में पढ़ता है ये साहब जो हैं ये कमांडर ऑफ गॉग एंड मै गॉग हैं ये कुछ कुछ हलाकू खान से मिलते जुलते थे तो शायद इसलिए लोग इनको समझते थे लेकिन ही इज़ द कमांडर ऑफ याजूज माजूज और या गोग एंड मैगोग और इसकी खबर आती है कि ये एक ज़माने में आ गया था बाहर निकल कर जहाँ पर भी बंद था तो उसकी तारीख चल रही है उसके साथ साथ दाबतुल अर्ज ये एक जिस तरह क्रिश्चन फेथ में एक बीस्ट ऑफ द एंड टाइम्स है इस तरह इस्लामिक उसमें भी बिलीफ सिस्टम में दावतुल अज एक क्रीचर है जो क़्यामत के करीब निकलेगा और तबाही फैलाएगा दज्जाल के अलावा है ये एंड दिस ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड इज अ सैम्पल एंड दिस ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड इज अगेन ए कम्प्लीटली औरिजिनल मॉडल मेड फ्राम इमेजिनेशन बट दिस इज दाबतुल अर्ज फिर हमारे आपके जाने पहचाने दज्जाल साहब ये अपने गार में कैद हैं और 
again, this is a model. We just use this model to uh, present the idea. Or ye bhi niklenge, ye bhi dabatola uske saath milkar kuch tamasha karenge. To ye bhi uska ek tha. Ye ek tanin ke naam se ek janwar hai jo kehte hain ki samandar mein jo lehre paida hoti hain, uske movement ki wajah se hoti hain, warna samandar ka pani still hota. So because he moves, he's so he's huge. So again, that's a depiction, or Yevska, one of the. It's maybe it's very closely resembles original. Or then, आगे चलते हैं, कज़बीनी साहब और भी देखते हैं, कहते हैं कि ये तो लगता है कि किसी alien beings का हमला हो गया. So you know, it's, it's a kind of he is trying to imagine के ये सब कुछ जो हो रहा है ये कोई शैतानी काम हो रहा है और ये इतना सिंपल नहीं है जितना बधाई नजर आ रहा है एंड देन ही रिसर्चेस ही रिसर्चेस मैनी डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ प्लांट्स व्हिच ग्रो ह्यूमन फॉर्म्स दीज आर एक्चुअली ऑल लिस्टेड इन द इन हिज अजाबल मखलुकात चार तरह के वक्त वक्त का नाम आपने सुना होगा ज़्यादातर लेकिन वक्त वक्त के अलावा भी तीन और तरह के ट्रीज हैं जिसपे ह्यूमन फॉर्म्स अकॉर्डिंग टू आवर फोक बिलीव्स ऑफ डिफरेंट एरियाज ऑफ द इस्लामिक एट लैंड्स फिर ऐसे जानवर हैं जो और फिर ही नहीं स्ट्राइंग टू बिल्ड हिज आर्गुमेंट के یقینا ایسے کریچرز ہیں جو انسانوں پر حملہ کر رہے ہیں تو یہ کوئی شیطان کے کارندے ہیں اور وغیرہ وغیرہ تیز the thong lagged man کریچرز اس کو پیر تسمہ پا کے نام سے ہم جانتے ہیں سی اسیسن زیٹر آن یہ اس کی دو فارمز ہیں جو آپ کو جس کے بارے میں آپ کبھی ذکر پڑھیں گے تو this is a modern picture the one in the middle a modern illustration وہ ایک پرانی ہے night of the sea and this is a completely original depiction منٹیکور منٹیکور ہم اس کو گریک یا رومن سمجھتے ہیں لیکن it actually was native to India this is an original illustration. Uh, it looks like someone I know. I can't. Actually, now, then the story goes on, and then they know that Alexander's uh, Alexander tried to ward off Yajuj Majuj. He had many adventures. He went under the sea to conquer the sea. He failed in that. He tried to conquer the skies. He failed in that as well. Ye iske Western tradition mein joski sorry. Let me explain. So Alexander's trip under the sea is shared between both Western and Eastern literatures. Ye uska ek codex mein se hai, and this is one of the Mughal illustrations of Alexander's journey under the sea. Alexander's flight, this is uh, the Western tradition, a depiction of how Alexander, we have heard about him that he was going to go to the Namrud, but in some traditions it was Alexander who did that. So this one here, which is a Persian uh, manuscript, shows Alexander trying to scale the heavens and conquer the heavens. That is Yajuj Majuj in the Western tradition. Uh, they show Alexander encountering the race of Yajuj Majuj. Or here par the Islamic uh, Hamari tradition is made. Or here Yajuj Majuj. This is the fall of Baghdad, uh, an illustration that depicts the fall of Baghdad, how they were Mongols were attacking it. It was much more gory, as a it na calm and peaceful. Here, it's like that. The Abbasid Caliph was killed, and 
this is Halaku Khan, he took over, or uh, that's a depiction, again, from the Western tradition of uh, Gog and Magog, Yajuj Majuj, and that here is uh, this one right at the bottom. Unfortunately, you can't see a bigger image of this, is uh, an actual illustration from Padvini's manuscript, uh, something which, which he had in his lifetime. So this manuscript had passed his hand. And I think uh, that's that should give you a flavor of the book, some of the themes that are explored in the book, and uh, some, uh, some ideas that I struggled with to you know, put, put in a kind of coherent narrative. So, Musharraf, thank you so much for that illustrated walkthrough. Um, you know what I was thinking when we were through it, so I was imagining, how many people are in this camera? Harry Potter fan? Hand up, please. It's about half a camera. So Harry Potter is chock filled or chock full of bestery creatures, correct? You will be able to talk to them with many people. Griffin. Griffin, Manticore too, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Sphinx too. So what if, um, I don't know if you realize this yet, but Musharraf has just compiled an encyclopedia for the aspiring writers in the room. So you can steal at your whim because these creatures, jo hain, these are part of our legacy. He's basically given the world a gift. It's a bestiary that belongs solely to us. It is not borrowed from a different world. It is ours. It is decolonized. And it is pre- and post-colonial. Just to keep that in mind. So, dusri cheez. Dusri cheez that I couldn't help notice is it's very interesting, the Ana of the Yajuj Majuj and the idea. And the, uh, there is this, um, there is this phobia, right? There is this anxiety. There is this xenophobia that's running like a current through the manuscript. Just may the people see this merman and he's representing to them the end of times. So the book seems like an ode to anxiety and possibly grief. And I think many people have talked about it before when I was sitting here. So, would you th do you think that the creation of these kind of myths, um, the, the compilation, this almost obsessive compilation, and Kazmini's recurrent ruminations are reflective of this underlying fear of the end of times for the Islamic civilization or the Abbasid Caliphate? Gee, or not only that, uh, well, I didn't have to imagine too much because most of the incidents that I have written about in this book <coughs> are actual, uh, actually historically documented. So, many um, Abbasid uh, caliphs ke door me um, fears hue ke yajuj majuj aare or pahunchne wale or uski jo diwar hai jo sadd sikandari hai ya jis diwar ke piche wo band hai usme crack aa gaya hai to salam tarjuman ek saab ko us mission pe bheja jata hai ki dekh kya ho ke wo diwar usme crack to nahi aaya aur agar koi aaya hai to batao taaki uski repair wagaira ka kuch kaam kiya jaye so these these were the actual uh, preoccupations of the caliphs और उसकी वजह सिर्फ ये थी कि सोसाइटी का मेल्डाउन बहुत अरसे से शुरू हुआ था। अबासीद कैलिफ डिड नॉट जस्ट डिसअपेयर ओवरनाइट। इट वाज इट स्लोली डिसइंटीग्रेटेड। और उनको ख्वाब आते थे बादशाहों को कि उनको याजुज माजुज नजर आते थे ख्वाब के अंदर कि वो हमला कर रहे हैं उनकी लैंड्स पर और at the time. So it sounds very fascinating. This is not a story, but it's not a story. I have to do a lot of work. I have to remove the things and remove the things. You have to do a restructuring, but that's really tough though. Just, just put that out there. You're understating yourself. It's a very tough thing to actually uh, uh, crystallize this kind of information. Actually, you know, there is a chapter in the book where the caliph, you, you know, segueing from the caliph's nightmares, you know, there's a short story by Kevin Brockmeyer. Uh, it's called The Ceiling, um, in which basically the earth is, there is a lid that's coming from the heavens and it's coming down to the earth slowly. 
So whether you nuke it, whether you bomb it, you can attack with missiles, that lid is just coming down. That lid is unstoppable. So Puri story is people living under that lid, going about their daily business. There is a chapter in the book that really does that, where you talk about the coming of the apocalypse and the people's reaction to this inevitable event that is going to hit them very soon. What do you, what do you think about that sort of anxiety? That there is something that's inevitable, and there is a big bit of fatalism about that concept, right? What do you think about that? Because people's belief was that when the Jews will come, then the end will be close. So they left their businesses. And they said, now we don't have to do anything, now we just have to die. And there were some kind of events. جس سے ظاہری بات ہے جو اس کا پورا ان کا نظام ہوتا تھا سلطنت کا جو عباسی چلا رہے تھے وہ خطرے میں پڑ جاتا تھا تو وہ ان کو یہ بہت تشویش تھی کہ لوگوں کو اطمینان رہے کہ یاجوج موجود نہیں آ رہے اور اس کے لیے وہ باقاعدہ مشنز بھیجتے رہتے تھے مامون مامون رشید کے زمانے میں ایک مشن بھیجا گیا کہ نہیں سوری مشن نہیں بھیجا گیا انہوں نے ایک ڈیٹیشمنٹ بھیجا اپنے فوجیوں کا کہ اگر شام کی سرحد سے وہ نمودار ہونے والے ہیں یاجوج ماجوج ان کو یقین ہو گیا کہ وہ آ رہے ہیں سو انہوں نے کہا اس کو شام کی سرحد پر روک لیا جائے اور ان کو تھوڑی دیر انگیج کر کے جتنا بھی بھاوتاؤ کیا جائے اور اس کے بعد پھر اتنی دیر میں خلیفہ کو اتنا وقت مل جائے گا کہ اپنے تمام امت کے ساتھ خدا کے روبر حاضر کرنے کے لیے تیار ہو جائے اپنے گناہ بخش والے وغیرہ وغیرہ سو آل دیز کریزی تھنگز آر ہیپنگ So, you know, um, because I, I, I really like thinking about structure and, you know, uh, sort of classifying things if I can. So, uh, for that's a lot of... <laughs> that's my problem. <laughs> uh, agreed. So, uh, one thing that I keep thinking about is the idea of genre versus mainstream realism. So, this book, some, I think it is straddling, straddling the boundary between different genres, no? because it is not really a fantasy, is it? Ismay, you were talking about taxonomy, you were talking about epistemology, and for me, and I think I sort of see this that way in my head, I think this is ontological science fiction. True to the science of that time. What do you think about that? Yeah, um, Swan had made this point uh, earlier as well, when we were discussing it, or I had not thought of it that way, but you know, when he mentioned that, I realized that yes, it's true that uh, science fiction is the same thing جس طرح ہم سائنس کو امیجن کر سکتے ہیں یا جس طرح ہم سوچ سکتے ہیں کہ سائنس آگے دو سو سال میں سو سال میں یا پانچ سو سال میں جہاں تک پہنچے گی اسی کے بارے میں سائنس فکشن لکھا جاتا ہے یا ڈسٹوپیا جو بھی لکھا جاتا ہے سو بٹ قزوینی واز آلسو انگیجنگ ود دا سیم سورٹ آف ورک ہی واز انویسٹیگیٹنگ سائنٹیفک فینومنا اینڈ اے بک دیٹ ڈپکٹس دیٹ اور انویسٹیگیٹس The, the thought process behind it can, can, can be uh, classified as dealing with a science fiction theme or uh, can, can we classify as science fiction? So it does seem like that you're drawn to mythology in general. A lot of your work um, does revolve or uh, pull from mythology, myths of different Talishim Hosherba, Amir Hamza. So it seems like you gravitate towards that. Is that an interest that came over time or did you grow up in that milieu? Um, I, um, I grew up in a house where I had uh, some access to books, which I read very quickly. But I was My real exposure to uh, Mythology and uh, folklore it started when I first started translating the Dastan Amir Hamza, the Adventures of Amir Hamza. So, in that time, every third paragraph was lost, some terms didn't come to understand any of them, and I would look up dictionaries. Or when you start opening dictionaries, one entry leads to another, and that leads to another, something else. So I learned more, uh, more in uh, more about mythology from investigating uh, entries while translating Amir Hamza than I actually read mythology or science fiction. I've, I've read some mythology, but not as much as I would have. So I know we'll, we should probably have some time for questions later. So I'm going to maybe ask one or two uh, small questions. I think 
a lot of people might appreciate um, this of writers that visit. Um, do you have any recommendation or any advice for people who are on the same journey and who hope to produce books that might be true to what they believe in or what they want to do? Huh. Um, I will say that uh, you must have trust in yourself. Lekin, I will add a kind of uh, uh, make an addendum to that and say that you must have trust in yourself after you have been exposed to and after you have gone through a bit of material. So, what the fuck? Hum sab ke saath hota hai ki bas ye sab se khayal a gaya aur bas. Me, me pada genius hua tha. Ha. So, there's and this is also, I think, part of a writing process. Ki ap typical folly ki ha bas ye bahut achhi chiz hai. Nahi nahi, aapko kuch nahi pata. Nahi bas ye kahani aisi honi chahiye. Isme koi editing ki zarurat nahi hai. But that you know that falls on the wayside once you once you actually. Start the process of writing and publishing. आपको पता चल जाता है कि इस तरह नहीं होता सब चीजों के अंदर. Every book is a collaborative effort. There were far too many entries in this book, which some of which were क्योंकि मुझे मजा आ रहा था कि अच्छा ये भी monster है, ये भी monster है, ये भी है. लेकिन my editor Simar Puneet at Alif उसने कहा कि नहीं इतनी ज़्यादा अगर entries होंगी तो उससे you'll get the reader will get distracted. तो इसमें तो कुछ निकाल दो. So and she pointed out that yeah yeah yeah. So and she was right. So I suppose I have taken it out. So you one one is that you when you write something and we all write in competition first. किसी दिखाने के लिए दुनिया को लिखते हैं ना कि अच्छा भाई हम भी राइटर हैं या ये हमारा हीरो है उस उस जैसा लिखना चाहते हैं या उसके मुकाबले पे लिखना चाहते हैं. तो हमेशा अपने मुकाबले के लिए किसी मास्टर को चूज करें। Some great writer Dickens है English tradition के अंदर बेशमार और हैं। अपने contemporaries को चूज नहीं करें अपने मुकाबले के लिए क्योंकि उनसे आप कुछ भी नहीं सीख सकेंगे। अगर आप अपने contemporary के मुकाबले में कुछ उससे दो दो चार दर्जे बेहतर चीज भी लिख देंगे, तो वो कभी भी उस मेयर की नहीं होगी जितनी किसी एक मास्टर या उस्ताद के लिखी हुई चीज के मुकाबले में अगर आप लिखेंगे तो वो वो बनेगी और एक और चीज उसमें बड़ी सिंपल सी ये है कि आपको अपनी औकात पता रहती है हमने भी अपना पहला नोवेल डिकेंस के मुकाबले में लिखा था कि हाँ भाई डिकेंस लिख सकता है तो हम भी लिखेंगे कल्विनो साब लिख सकते हैं तो हम भी लिख सकते हैं लेकिन कहीं भी उसके बराबर का नहीं है। लेकिन उससे ये होता है कि अगर आपके कोई इस टाइप का फिगर हो आपके जहन में कि मैं इस तरह की किताब लिखना चाहता हूँ, तो the techniques that that particular writer or author employs can be used by you to resolve problematic stuff in your not problematic in the wrong sense, but you know. Difficult stuff which you are struggling with in your own narratives. So read from everyone and steal from everyone. I think that's great advice. I think with that we're probably going to open the floor to questions. Is that okay with you, Musharraf? Yes, yes, absolutely. If you have any questions, please ask away. पहले जो लोग प्लांट किए मैंने क्वेश्चन पूछने के लिए वो पूछे जनाब जनाब तो मुआवजा कहानियों से भरा हुआ होता है और बहुत सारी कहानियां आजकल डिफाइनिंग हैं हमारे मुआवजे के अंदर खास तौर पे मिलेनियल्स के लिए आप उन कहानियों को और उस कहानियों के स्ट्रक्चर को एक जो माहौल आजकल सामने आया है कि the kinds of stories that we buy into younger people particularly buy into how do you see them and how do you place yourself within that framework of adding to that universe of storytelling within the society? Sorry, जो एक आपका मैं I could not hear. मेरे कहने का मकसद ये कि ये सकाफत है ना जी जिसके अंदर कुछ कहानियाँ चल रही हैं साथ साथ. जी. ठीक है जी. इन कहानियों का मजमूआ जो है जो कि आजकल millennial young people are actually buying into the sort of story universe that they are buying into. How do you see that? And how do you see yourself within that universe? Um. देखिए मैं किसी और की तो बात 
यूँ नहीं कर सकता कि एवरी पर्सन इज जस्टिफाइड इन सब्सक्राइबिंग टू और एसोसिएटिंग विद एनी पर्टिकुलर ट्रेंड और फॉर्म और थाट जिससे वो समझते हैं कि उससे उनका कोई कनेक्शन है मुझे अक्सर मेरे दोस्त कहते हैं कि आप ये कहाँ पीछे चले जाते हैं कंटेम्प्रेरी कुछ लिखिए तो कंटेम्प्रेरी मैं वाकिफ हूँ बहुत सारी आई मीन आई कीप माई सर्व अब्रेस फ्राम ऑल द पोलिटिकल डेवलपमेंट्स एंड अदर थिंग्स लेकिन उससे उनको पढ़ के मुझे कोई खुशी नहीं होती उस उनको हमेशा अपनी प्रोटेक्शन के लिए मैं पढ़ता हूँ कि अच्छा अब क्या हो रहा है ये क्या हो रहा है <laughs> कहाँ से जान बचने का कोई सामान हो सकता है तो इट्स इट्स दैट काइंड ऑफ कनेक्शन विद रियलिटी विद अ रियलिटी इन पाकिस्तान कि आप अच्छा यहाँ से मुश्किल हालात हैं यू नो खामोश हो जाएं या चुप हो जाएं या लेकिन इसका ये मतलब नहीं है कि आप उन चीज़ों को uh, समझ नहीं रहे या उनके उन सब का कोई इंगेजमेंट uh, नहीं है एट अ डीपर लेवल वो है बट द काइंड ऑफ नैरेटिव दैट गिव मी जॉय टू एक्सप्लोर एंड फिर वो आपका चार पाँच साल का अरसा होता है दो तीन साल का अरसा होता है जिसमें आप बैठे होते हैं अपनी टेबल पर अपने लैपटॉप uh, पर और बैंगिंग अवे तो उसको जस्टिफाई करना बहुत मुश्किल होता है अगर आप अनलेस समर इज पेइंग लॉट ऑफ मनी कि क्यों आदमी उस पर अपना वक्त ज़ाया करे ऐसी चीज़ पे जिसमें जिससे आपको कोई अंदर से कोई खुशी नहीं मिल रही है लेट्स पुट इट दिस वे हाँ हाँ बिल्कुल 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 आप स्केप कह सकते हैं मैं आई एम एन स्केप आर्टिस्ट सो इस्केपिस्ट फिक्शन के बारे में इट्स अक्सर आप अमेरिका में चले जाएं या इंग्लैंड में चले जाएं इंग्लैंड में कम अमेरिका में ज़्यादा तो जो एम एफ ए प्रोग्राम्स हैं हिस्टोरिकली वो रियलिज़म पे या मैमेटिसम पे फोकस करते थे सो असला के लगवेन लेजेंडरी राइटर ऑफन यूज टू से कि इस्केपिस्ट फैंटसीज या इस्केपिस्ट फिक्शन अगर एक प्रिजनर पिंजरे में बंद है तो वट्स रॉन्ग विद इस्केपिंग द पिंजरा एंड दैट इज़ वन वे ऑफ लुकिंग एट द पिंजरा अ न्यू so that would be the way i would look at escapers fiction amit uh somebody has offered and i've said yes <laughs> so it will be in the process <laughs> ji ट्रेडिशनल ओरिजिन है तब तो इसमें एक डिग्री ऑफ बिलीफ था सो यू नो फॉर देम इट वॉज एंड इस्केपिज्म ट्रू ट्रू एब्सोलूटलीटी जी तो वॉट वॉज देर डिग्री ऑफ बिलीफ इन इट वॉज इट पार्शल और डिड दे एक्चुअली बिलीव इन इट दो दो तरह से था एक तो द रूलर्स द रूलिंग क्लास विच वॉज द अब्बासी खलीफा जो थे उनका तो ये था कि भाई अपनी बचाया जाए अपनी हुकूमत उसको एक्सटेंड किया जाए या अगर लोगों को कोई तशवीश है तो उनकी तशवीश को रफा किया जाए सो देयर्स वाज अ वेरी यू नो प्रैक्टिकल इंगेजमेंट विद इट कुछ दूसरे खलीफा थे जिनको ख्वाब आ रहे थे कि भाई यजुज मौजूद ने हमला कर दिया तुम पे और वो ऑफकोर्स दे बिलीव इन इट एज वेल तो उनको तो कुछ और uh, एक जाति भी एक डर था उसका लेकिन जो आम लोग थे उनके लिए ये बहुत एक परेशान कन बात थी कि अब ज़िंदगी इनकी ख़त्म हो जाएंगी और जो भी अगर इस तरह की कोई चीज़ हो रही है और चूँकि उनका बिलीफ था कि भाई ये दज्जाल आ रहा है या ये कोई दूसरा दावत उलर्द आ रहा है तो वो उसको बिल्कुल उस तरह देखते थे कि हाँ जिस तरह अभी पी एस एल का मैच हो रहा है नो दैट्स दावत उलर्द इट कॉज लॉट ऑफ डिस्ट्रेस अराउंड अराउंड टाउन तो उनके लिए इट वॉज अ लिव रियलिटी नेटवर्क <laughs> जी 
I just wanted to know, uh, Musharraf, if the, the, your next work is percolating in your mind and whether, you know, you've started writing another of? Uh, I've, been, I've been working on a couple of uh, uh, novels. Uh, some are at the note-taking stage. Some are uh, further uh, ski uh, narrative ko sida karna hai, note-taking ho chuki. So I, I typically work on more than one thing at the same time. I think there's a question at the back, that gentleman there. Foreign inspirations, for example, uh, while looking at, at these photos, uh, I was reminded of uh, Borges, the, books, uh, the book of imaginary beings. Hmm. So it will be very helpful for the audience, I think. Uh, aap, aap, uh, ki baat kar uh, inspirations, or writers. Inspirations, writers. This is what you have to escape artists. And there are many people who want to read this or ya likhna chahte hain to us hawale se aap kuch guide kar dein ya aap apne hawale se ek being a writer aap kin logon se inspire hue is 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 hawale se jin dost ko maine sabse pehle apni writings dikhai unke mashware ke liye aur jin ki cheeze maine nazme maine tarjuma bhi ki wo afzal ahmed sayyid sahab hain baithe hue yahan pe he was uh, he was a kind of uh, model reader. If you like them, then it's okay. Then it's okay. So that was... Uh, and uh, even though Azal Sahib is a poet and he writes parables, and a writer is very connected to that, but I think uh, poetry does perform another uh, function. It, uh, it talks obliquely of things which are very immediate. So this is uh, one of the things very uh, noticeable in Afzal's poetry as well. So, but if you want to talk about novelists, I had written my first novel, uh, Salar Jung's Passion. So I was stuck somewhere else. So I said, if Calvino was there, then what would he do? He was in such a place, he gave the scope, he gave the scope, he gave the scope, he gave the scope. So, you know, those kind of things you struggle with and uh, you find inspiration from your heroes. Dickens, I really like it, but he was very bad for the people. So, okay, he will understand. But he wrote some fantastic uh, fiction and uh, I appreciate him for that. There's a question. Uh, it's a question about the process. You said start mein tha ki it's a very unusual book. So like normally log I didn't say it, I didn't say it. So like a lot of the writers when they start writing, they have a goal in mind that I have to reach this point pe reach karna, and at that point I will have achieved what I want. So when you started, did you have a goal in mind or you have started it and like you have to understand what you are doing? At the moment, it happens that जब ये मैं उससे between clean rescue में बार-बार मिसाल दे रहा हूँ लेकिन उसके जब मरहले से मैं गुजर गया दस साल के struggle के कि वो मुझसे काबूनी हो रहा था उसका narrative कहानी मुझे पता थी end पता था beginning पता थी सब चीजें थीं उसकी control नहीं हो रहा था मुझसे narrative वो तो उसमें ये होता है कि अब मैं हमेशा कहानी में imagine करके लिख लेता हूँ उसको एक paragraph दो paragraph या दस pages और उसके बाद मैं इसको decide करता हूँ कि इसके अंदर आप इसको लिखने शुरू करना है जब मुझे एंड पता है मुझे उस कहानी का मूड पता है कि एंड अगर इससे हैप्पी नोट तो फिर यू नो देल बी स्लाइटली चर्पी नोट एट द बिगनिंग इफ इट्स अ सैड एंडिंग देल बी डोलफुल स्टार्ट ऑफ द बुक तो ये है कि इसको लिखते हुए क्योंकि इसके अंदर इतनी ज़्यादा चीज़ें थी वो फैल गई थी मुझसे और इसको भी कंट्रोल करने में मुझे मुश्किल हो रही थी लेकिन अब उसमें उसमें आप कोई वो नहीं कर सकते because we are humans, we are uh, weak, we are, uh, we are failures <laughs> most of the time at uh, things we do. So, uh, struggle is, is fun, it's lots of fun. And the good thing is that when you go through that process, you know that this is what it is. You know, I went through it, I triumphed in the end, and maybe if I attempt this a second time, I'll have better luck or, you know. So, 
यू कीप एडिंग यू कीप एडिंग और अगर आपका पब्लिशर आपके पास छोड़ दे किताब तो आप उसको फिर कुछ एक आध सेंटेंस ऐड कर देंगे तो वो चलता रहता है सो लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन एंड ऑल माई नॉन बाइनरी फ्रेंड्स हमारा सेशन अख्ताम को पहुँच रहा है थैंक यू सो मच मुशरफ आई एम गेटिंग सिग्नल फ्राम एवरी वन थैंक यू थैंक यू एवरी वन I hope you uh, enjoy the book. Uh, it's available uh, at all one. And the good thing is that I have published it myself. So. <laughs> <laughs>